Howdy, it's Kyle talking about bridges in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh is known as the city of bridges. There are many famous gold bridges spanning its rivers right downtown, and Philadelphia is thought to have significantly fewer bridges, even though it's a much larger city than Pittsburgh. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss whether or not that's true. Is Pittsburgh really the city in the country that has the most bridges? And is Philadelphia deserving of its reputation of a one bridge city? So let's talk about the bridges in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. I'm going to start off by talking about Pittsburgh. It's the second largest city in Pennsylvania with a population of about 302,000. With Philadelphia having a population of over 1.5 million, Pittsburgh is about one-fifth the size of Philadelphia. Normally, I'll use metropolitan areas as a better statistic, but for this video, I will be using the central city itself and just the very inner ring suburbs. With Pittsburgh, I'm going to talk about how there's an urban legend about how the city has the most bridges of any in the U.S., this is the result of a study and a book done by one guy that showed there were 446 bridges in the city. However, he was counting overpasses, small footpaths, decorative bridges at the Botanical Garden. And although all of those can be considered bridges, no other city counted those on their official count. So if every city counted as decorative bridges and overpasses, there would be many cities in the country with more bridges than Pittsburgh. And no surprise that when you do all that, New York would be number one. So even with all that, Pittsburgh has 297 bridges, which is still very high for a city of its size. I think when a lot of people hear that Pittsburgh has the most bridges in the country, it seems believable because when you see pictures of downtown, you just see so many bridges spanning the rivers right there. And indeed, when you see photos of other cities with major rivers going through it, you don't see as many bridges crossing those rivers. And that's especially true in regard to Philadelphia. So for this discussion, I'm going to be talking about just the bridges over the major rivers in the cities. So even though Pittsburgh doesn't have the largest number of bridges in the city, it does have the largest number of bridges that span more than 300 feet. And that's a testament to the city having so many bridges over its major rivers. The city is known to have three major rivers. You have the Monongahela and the Allegheny that merge to form the Ohio River. From a purely fluvial geomorphology perspective, it really is only two rivers. As you could say that either the Monongahela or the Allegheny is the major river and the other one is a tributary. But nonetheless, they do have three different names. And I'm going to start off by talking about the bridges over the Allegheny River. When you count vehicular and railroad traffic, there are 14 bridges that span the Allegheny River through the city of Pittsburgh. Perhaps the most identifiable bridges in the city are the Three Sisters. Two of them were built in 1926 and the third in 1928. And they're named after three prominent Pittsburghers, environmentalist Rachel Carlson, artist Andy Warhol, and baseball player Roberto Clemente, who is not from Pittsburgh but played for the Pittsburgh Pirates. But right away, you see these are very close bridges, 6th, 7th, and 9th streets. And I believe Pittsburgh is the only city that has three bridges of three different streets that close to each other. And you also have the 16th Street Bridge built in 1922, the 31st Street Bridge built in 1928, and the 40th Street Bridge built in 1924. And then continuing on to the eastern edge of the city is the 62nd Street Bridge built in 1962, the Highland Park Bridge built in 1937, and the Holton Bridge built in 2016 to replace the one built in 1908. That one is technically outside the city limits, but just barely. And one thing you'll notice through this entire video is how many of these bridges were built in the 1920s and 1930s. And this is undoubtedly due to the rise in the automobile. There are also two major bridges that are interstate freeways. One is the Veterans Bridge built in 1988, and that's I-579. And the other is the Fort Duquesne Bridge built in 1963, and that's for I-279. And funny story about the Fort Duquesne Bridge, it was built in 1963, but it was a bridge to nowhere until 1969. They built the bridge before there was any way to connect it by road to the shore. And if you live in the state, you might be thinking that's about the most pen dot thing ever. There are also three major railroad only bridges that cross the Allegheny. The Hers Island Bridge built in 1903, the Fort Wayne Bridge built in 1904, and the 33rd Street Railroad Bridge built in 1921. So no matter where you are in Pittsburgh, you never have to go very far to cross the Allegheny River. The Monongahela River is the one that flows through the south part of the city. Between vehicular and railroad bridges, there are nine that span the river in the city and a tenth one that's just barely outside the city limits. Downtown, you have the large Fort Pitt Bridge built in 1959, that's I-376. 
The oldest of the major bridges still in use is the Smithfield Street Bridge built in 1883. And this would be a great bridge to be turned into one that was just pedestrian only. And many of the bridges that span the Monongahela are ones that connect pretty cool parts of Pittsburgh on each side of the river. With neighborhoods like Oakland and Squirrel Hill on the north side and the south side flats on the south side. Some of the other bridges near downtown include the Liberty Bridge built in 1928, the 10th Street Bridge built in 1933, and the Birmingham Bridge built in 1976. But it's worth noting that because of the topography of Pittsburgh, many of these bridges, when they get to the other side, the road goes through the mountain as a tunnel. And these are mainly on the south side because the south side terrain is just so much steeper. So you have the Fort Pitt Tunnel, which is I-376, the Liberty Tunnel, and the Armstrong Tunnel. And there are many other tunnels in Pittsburgh that aren't connected to a bridge. A little further up river from downtown crossing the Monongahela is the Hot Metal Bridge. This consists of two different spans, one built in 1887, one built in 1900. One of these was a normal railroad bridge, and the other one was a railroad bridge that had these special carts that carried molten iron. But today, those two spans are for cars and pedestrians. For railroad-only bridges, you have the really cool Panhandle Bridge right downtown, and also the Glenwood B&O Railroad Bridge built in 1884. So even though there aren't as many bridges crossing the Monongahela as the Allegheny, 10 is still a pretty good number. And finally, the Ohio River, which is downriver of downtown. And for the Ohio, there are only two vehicular and one railroad bridge that cross the river in the city limits. Less of the city is alongside the Ohio River, so that's why you have fewer bridges there. The three bridges are the West End Bridge, which is US-19, built in 1932. The McKees Rocks Bridge, built in 1931 and the Ohio Connect Railroad Bridge built in 1915. So these continue the trend of vehicular bridges being built in the 1920s and 1930s to accommodate all these new cars. And to this day, drivers have many options to cross the three rivers. But it's also worth pointing out that the city also has many bridges over ravines. I'm not going to get into all of these, but I do want to talk about a couple of the major ones. One is the Charles Anderson Memorial Bridge. This goes over a large ravine in Shenley Park. And I also want to mention the Fern Hollow Bridge that was built in 1973 and collapsed in 2022. There were five cars on the bridge, but no fatalities, thankfully. But it was built in 1973, and it won awards for new bridge design. But that highlights a major issue with the city having so many bridges. They have so many bridges to maintain. And in fact, a study from 2011 showed that 30% of the bridges in Pittsburgh were deficient. That's the highest percentage of any city in the U.S., and this study was conducted after a bridge collapse in 2008. And maintaining a bridge is much more expensive than maintaining a regular stretch of road. So in the long run, having a ton of bridges might not be great for a city's finances. But for better or for worse, there are 27 bridges that cross the three major rivers in Pittsburgh. So now let's move on to Philadelphia. Like I mentioned before, the population is just over 1.5 million. So it's about five times the size of Pittsburgh, but certainly doesn't have five times the number of bridges. The major river that flows through the city is the Delaware River. Of course, the major difference here is the Delaware River is a state line. This is the border with New Jersey. So when you see photos of the downtown skyline, you don't see as many bridges, especially compared to Pittsburgh. Two of the bridges go from downtown to Camden, New Jersey. One is the Walt Whitman Bridge, built in 1957, that's I-76. And the other is the Benjamin Franklin Bridge, built in 1926, and that's I-676. Also downtown is the Betsy Ross Bridge, built in 1976. So with Philadelphia being such an important city in terms of U.S. history, to have bridges named after Benjamin Franklin and Betsy Ross is very appropriate. And the most upriver of the bridges in the city is the Tacony Palmyra Bridge, built in 1929. So there are significantly fewer bridges that cross the Delaware River than the major rivers in Pittsburgh. Looking at this map, you can see just how far apart the last bridge in downtown is to the next bridge to cross over the river. It's over 21 miles between downtown Philly and Chester. And that bridge was built in 1973. Before that, you had to go all the way down to Wilmington to cross the river. And going northeast of the city, it's about 16 miles between the last bridge of the city and the first bridge of the suburbs. And going back to Pittsburgh along the Allegheny, it's only about 6 miles between the last bridge in the city and the first one in the suburbs. And along the Ohio River, it's less than six miles between the last bridge of the city and the first one of the suburbs, which is the I-79 bridge. So you certainly have to travel much farther in the Philadelphia area to find a bridge where you can cross the Delaware River. 
One of the reasons why many people often think that Philadelphia doesn't have many bridges is because there are only four that span the Delaware River, and this is certainly the widest river that flows through the city. But a major difference is that Philadelphia has another river flowing through the city. The Schuylkill River flows through the entire city and is not a state line with New Jersey or Delaware. So whereas Philly might only have four bridges that cross the Delaware River, there are 30 bridges that cross the Schuylkill. I'm not going to go over all of them individually, but of the 37 are railroad bridges and two are pedestrian only. Many of them cross the river at Fairmount Park, which is the large Central Park type park in the city. Most were built post-automobile, but some of the oldest ones include the Strawberry Mansion Bridge built in 1897, the Falls Bridge built in 1895 that goes through Fairmount Park, and the two pedestrian-only bridges are the Pencoid Bridge built in 1900 and the Maniunk Bridge built in 1918. But I think Philly doesn't get the credit it deserves for having so many bridges because the Schuylkill River just isn't that terribly wide and the bridges aren't nearly as impressive. But it's not Philly's fault that the river isn't that wide. So to sum up, Philadelphia does have more bridges crossing its major rivers than does Pittsburgh. There are 34 that cross either the Delaware or the Schuylkill, and Pittsburgh has 27 crossing either the Allegheny, Monongahela, or the Ohio. But nonetheless, Pittsburgh does have the larger number of large bridges and more impressive bridges. So you could say Philly has more bridges, but Pittsburgh has more cool bridges. So that's my look at bridges in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. And even though Pittsburgh isn't the city in the U.S. that has the most bridges, it certainly has more per capita than Philadelphia and almost all other cities as well. I like the way all those bridges right downtown look with the skyline, but again, it does cost a lot to maintain all those bridges. And Philadelphia doesn't have as many across the Delaware River. I'm sure historically just having a state boundary there with New Jersey having to deal with a separate state government and state state highway authority or whatever. So probably limited the number of bridges, but does it really matter? So if you live in these cities, does the traffic really flow much differently in these two cities based on the bridges? But I'd be curious to know about that. Couldn't really find much good information, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a nerd. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support, especially Rapid Thrash. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description. And as always, thank you very much.